I'm Dr. Shanan Khani, one of the lecturers for Foundations of Algorithms, and I am so excited to be seeing all of you in just a few days' time. But before we get there, I wanted to run through a few things that some of you might have questions about, because we're not going to be spending the first day on the syllabus, instead we're doing that right now. So without any further ado, we're, let's kick it off. How to be successful in Foundations of Algorithms, or our expectations of you. The first thing is to check the website, and what I mean by the website is Canvas, the LMS, if that's your preferred destination, or the sister website Algorithms R, A-R-E, Algorithms, A-R-E.fun, no.com.au, that will both contain the same information. So let's take a look at the website, there's a picture of it, and to get to it, all you do is open your browser, click in the browser bar, type in Algorithms, A-R-E.F-U-N, and as you can see, it loads right up. There's our beautiful welcome video. But you also might want to click on the Ed button. This is going to be our discussion forum for the semester. Instead of having announcements sent by Canvas and questions posted on Canvas, we're going to use Ed. And in this video, you'll see I'm going to create a question that I'm going to post to the instructors and the tutors um, about like uh, how fun are algorithms. Well, we know the answer from this class. So let's go ahead put it in the social tab, write up our question, and then when we're all done, we can go ahead and click post. So there are your three separate places to get class information, Canvas or the website, either one is fine, and then um, Ed, which you can access, again, either via the LMS or through Algorithms Are Fun. So that's our first expectation, and it's probably the most important one if you want to keep up to date, but the second most important thing is to actually attend class. Our classes are going to be interactive, my style is pretty hands-on, and you really will get much more out of the semester if you attend. Not only is attending valuable for uh, absorbing the class material, but it's also a way to help meet other people. And meeting other people is key, because as research shows, the biggest predictor of success in any one of your classes is how many friends you make and the strength of your peer group. So here we are back at the wonderful University of Melbourne this semester. No more Zoom, um, that is the university policy. That said, I will record all the lectures, but they're going to be posted with a time delay. So if you want to be keeping up to date, you have to attend lectures when they are. Our lecture theatre is not the largest one on campus. So if you want a good seat, please show up early. If there are too many of you, don't worry, we'll find a way to accommodate but we are looking forward to seeing all of your smiling faces in person. This goes for tutorials as well. Tutorials are very important and where you're going to get the most hands-on experience, and so we really hope that you're going to attend this semester. I'm looking forward to meeting all of you, and help me make that happen by partnering and showing up. One crucial thing to know about this semester is we're trying something new in our tutorials. We have uh, tutorials for both those who are already feeling super comfortable with programming and are ready to race ahead, as well as for those who are in uh, a place where you're coming from a less experienced background and you're just getting started. So our two more comfortable tutorial slots are at Friday 11 a.m. and at Monday 2.15 p.m. If you're having trouble getting in because they're already full, let us know. Again, this is a bit of a pilot, so we'll see how it goes, see how many people show up. If there aren't enough people, one of those might become a less comfortable workshop, and if there are too many, we might open up an additional, more comfortable workshop. So uh, make sure you're in the right tutorial, one that's suited for you. On top of that, if you do want to peek in at the more comfortable and see what's happening, feel free to attend and check it out. So our third big tip to success, and our third expectation, is that you actually put in the work to learn programming. Programming is a skill, it's not just knowledge. And so if you don't practice, and if you don't practice consistently throughout the semester, you're probably not going to gain the skill and also be able to succeed in the class. As an educator, ultimately I care about your learning, but I know all of you as students want to make sure that you get the best grade, so putting in the work is our next big tip. This involves a number of different things. So firstly, we are going to follow pretty the textbook pretty heavily, uh, both the lectures and the exercises and assignments are going to be drawn from this book, Programming, Problem Solving and Abstraction, by Alistair Moffat, who teaches the other semester of Comp 102. 
Um, in the book, you'll find a whole lot of exercises that you can complete on your own, but we've also uh, created an interactive site where you can engage with, the, with many of the puzzles, though not all from the book. This semester, we are using Ed. Some of you will have used Grok in the past for some of these exercises. This semester, we're trying it out on Ed. Uh, there will be a lessons button at the top that your tutor will show you in your first tutorial and um, click on there and it'll guide you through a series of worked exercises every week. Um, we'll also get to some of the requirements on you for weekly work in just a minute. But I want to note something about our tutorials this year. Thanks to the timing of public holidays, we're actually going to begin our weekly tutorial cycle on the Friday of week one. Now I know on the website it was temporarily advertised that we're gonna start at week two, but because of the public holidays, if you have a workshop on a Friday, your first workshop is the first week of classes. So our fourth big hint and our, how we expect you to really succeed in this class is to ask for help. Now this is going to uh, take a number of forms. So the first and best thing to do if you have a query is to go to Ed and type your query in there. Uh, it's possible that other students might answer you or other tutors and will endeavor to get replies to you as fast as possible during the working week. Now note that hopefully your tutors and your wonderful lecturing staff also have lives. So don't necessarily expect a response uh, within the hour or even necessarily within the day if it's a weekend or busier time, but we endeavor to get to them as fast as possible. I think in previous years, we've been able to keep the average time to under an hour with some queries taking a lot more and some queries being answered in as few as a couple of minutes. Another new thing that I wanted to highlight this year is we're about to launch the Computing and Information Systems First Year Learning Center. Now this is an initiative that I've been working really hard on and I'm really excited about. And we're going to be offering drop-in office hours with tutors every single day of the week. Now the timing of that will be posted soon in an announcement in the LMS. One thing to note though, is that some of the tutors will be Comp 101 tutors. Now those tutors are probably gonna be able to help you with a little bit of C, but they're also not as experienced as the Comp 102 tutors, 102 tutors who will be there also two hours a day. So keep your eyes peeled. The location for the First Year Learning Center is going to be inside Melbourne Connect, where my office is. That's 700 Swanson Street, and the Learning Center is on the third floor. I'm gonna post a video soon for all of you on the First Year website, on the, uh, on the Learning Center website, where all of you can see the beautiful folks at CISA uh, guiding you to how to get to the Learning Center. Um, and hopefully you'll find their way, your way there soon. Now, another point of call that you might wanna check out is CISA. This is the Computing and Information Systems Students Association. They're one of the largest and most active clubs on campus, and I wanted to make a plug for them because they also have a whole bunch of support events. So they've got Code with Friends, where once a week they plan to host hours where you can uh, work with others in a collaborative environment and hopefully get some snacks, as well as industry events, speakers, career days, um, and as well, they're going to have a review workshop, I believe, for this subject at the end of the semester. Now, I really want to emphasize this point again, ask for help. Now, though we have your tutors available, Jan Jong and I, uh, or Dr. Jan Jong and I are also here to help you out. Uh, while we're probably going to make our office hours at a regular time, but by appointment, so you have to let us know in advance, we are here to help you both with course queries, but also if you find you're struggling more in general, please come talk to us. Um, in prior years, we've had students who've faced all kinds of difficult scenarios that are uh, hindering their ability to be happy and healthy at the university. And it's really, really important to me personally that, you make sure, that we make sure and that you make sure you're getting the help you need. Um, I'm always here for a listening ear if things are going on. Um, and as many of you know, our country is in the midst of a uh, mental, uh, mental health crisis. And so I wanna make sure that all of you are aware that there are support resources for you at the university through counseling and psychological services, but also through uh, Dr. Jan Jong and myself, who are there to listen as a first place if you're not sure where to go, you're feeling a little lost or you need some help. I'm gonna say this one more time. It is really important to me that if you're struggling, you come and ask. My door is always open for such things. 
On a lighter note, something that's also important to Dr. Jan Jong and I is that you give feedback. Let us know what's working and what isn't working. We've been really, really hard at work improving this class year on year. This is the third year that we've worked together as a team and the subject is in a much better place, largely thanks to comments from all of you who let us know what could work a bit better. Now, sometimes we might disagree. We might think that something is pedagogically better if we do it our way. However, we're always open to listen and to hear what's on your mind. One point that is going to be particularly pertinent this semester is the question of academic honesty. Now, we know that many of you can get overwhelmed at various times in semester, things can build up, but the wrong way to approach that is to violate our expectations around academic honesty. Um, the point of Dr. Zhang Zhang and myself being here is to help you learn, and if you violate our expectations around honesty, you're short-circuiting that process. And while you may get in trouble, and we do have uh, mechanisms to catch people who are copying code or sharing code inappropriately with others, the main thing that you're doing wrong is you're cheating yourself out of a learning opportunity. Again, if you find you need an extension or you're struggling, come speak to us and speak to us as early as possible so we can help find a way to get your learning on track. The last thing you should feel that uh, is necessary for you to do is to violate academic honesty expectations. These, take these can take place largely within assessments, which we'll talk about in a minute. Um, but one thing that's a bit different this semester is we are going to be employing ways to detect people who are using AI-assisted tools to write their code. Please don't do that. We do have fairly sophisticated suites that allow us to track where people are sharing code with each other inappropriately, getting code from other sources. Um, it's not helpful to anyone. And uh, if you do get caught, there can be pretty serious sanctions. We have a pretty low tolerance for academic dishonesty in the class. Why? Because we want to help you learn. So onto the related topic of assessment. We have a number of different assessments in this, semester, in this course, and it is a little bit different from years past. This year, we're introducing weekly problem sets that will start in week two and go to week nine. Um, you don't have to complete all of them. We will ask you to complete five of them, and for each one you complete successfully, and these will be auto-graded, you'll get 1% of your final grade. Uh, the idea here is to give you an incentive to keep learning continuously throughout the semester and to give you a chance to test yourself on your understanding. The finer details of these weekly problem sets are still being worked out because this is the first year we ever run it, so please bear with us if there are some teething issues, let us know if things go wrong. We will keep in mind some flexibility around these as things go forward. These are worth 5% of your total grade, and then the next part of your assessment is a mid-semester test that will happen in week six. This will be 15% of your final grade and will be held in person in Wilson Hall. Yes, this year we are moving back to in-person exams partially around concerns of academic honesty because of these uh, online AI code generation tools. The capstone of your work this semester will be two programming assignments in week eight and week 11 tentatively. Um, and these combined are worth 40% of your grade. And then to wrap it all up and to give you a bit of a chance to show your, uh, to show your metal, we do have a final exam and that's worth 40% and will again be pen and paper in person. So to pass the class, what do you need to do? Well, first off, you need the same thing as always, you need 50%. However, we do have hurdles in this class. We need to make sure that you're both competent enough on the theoretical side and on uh, the, the, more, um, the more curricular side of the course. So this will be 22 out of 55 combined across the test and the exam. Um, and then as well, 16 out of 40 combined in the project. So if you're better at project work, we allow you to show off your shine there. And if you're better at the, the at the theoretical side, we allow you to show that off in the test and the exam. But we do require that you've ach achieved a minimal competency in both. And remember, you do still need to attain the 50% overall in the class. So things to do for week one, um, start reading the textbook, Confirm your workshop time and enrollment. Make sure you're in the right one, the less comfortable or the more comfortable. Workshops start the Friday of week one. Get ready to have fun. Because remember, algorithms are fun. I'll catch you all in our first lecture. <laughs>